Still thinks that Rob wins. I don't know. Maybe. I feel like in some some way, shape, or form, Trainer either goes even or wins. But damn, does Rob move fast when he doesn't seem like he should. It's kind of nuts, though. That being said, though, I mean, Squiggle landing a hit on Rob. He could easily be converting Dan to a whole lot more percent, but I don't think Dan had anticipated um, the down air to actually send in the opposite direction like that. Setting up a whole lot with Ash Attack, but I don't think he was too cognizant of the fact that he held Gyro in his hand there. Uh, it seemed like he wanted to extend it or something with up tilt, I believe would be my best guess. Um, and just ended up up throwing the gyro. That being said, how is Dan going to be able to land makes the most out of Charizard's multiple jumps mid-air just to be able to mix up Josh with an ever so slightly. Wow, back hit of nail into up air. Sure, <laughs> I, I guess. I guess on Charizard it works. Oh my goodness. Yeah, apparently, so it looks like Tekken is like the only way to really stop that. Right, that's, that's the setup. Um, I guess Charizard. We like see it week after week, people teching in place, people teching out, or people missing the tech and then trying to roll away. Um, they always fall victim to the uh, to the funny mid-screen flame blitz. One Razor Leaf, and that could easily be the stop, forcing the jump back onto the stage, but was unable to account for the actual distance of Rob's jump. Good, like, spacing and patient play from Joshua. And right now he's just playing outside of Charizard's burst range, trash set up Jago into up smash, but he was just so hasty with it. He really didn't have to wait that long. He could have gone up and down smash or something done like like down tilt, right? Dan was clearly waiting for him. Like, once again, using his multiple jumps mid-air just to throw Joshathan off his rhythm ever so slightly. Could have Flare Blitz just onto the platform. The spacing on that and timing was so, so good. Um, because Joshathan was only prepared for him to land back onto the stage. Is he going to be able to get the kill here? Yes, he is. Catching that whiff dash grab. You have to be really careful about things like that. Um, you know, Rob had just ample time to be able to punish that. Once again, like, I feel like Dan struggles to understand how to approach in this matchup. I definitely agree, like, with what you're saying here, but he's playing a whole lot of Charizard, not a lot of Squirtle, not a lot of Ivy, and I feel like playing Charizard in this matchup might be the most difficult thing that you can do to yourself. Look at that ping-ponging between himself oh and God. the Gyro! That was so cool! That was pretty sick, but damn. That was sick! That was pretty incredible. Wow. Yeah, it's really hard to get stuff going. Because it's like, Charizard is funny because, like, Charizard's character is just like, oh, he can accidentally do really well. But, like, uh, most of the time he'll just, like, in this sort of harassment, it's just like, damn, you better guess right or you're going to get hurt mm -hmm. quite a lot. But, uh, yeah. It's like, Ivysaur has just no out-of-shield options. Uh, doesn't have really good mobility, and Rob is just like in two places at once, literally, because of the gyro. So it gets really stressful. Like, maybe if we were to see a little bit more Squirtle, like, water gun on the gyro, I know that that's something that can be really good because, like, uh, it doesn't matter what charge it is, it'll just send the gyro just absolutely flying, so you don't have to worry about bumping into it or picking it up, but it means you need to take a much more, like, reserved uh, approach so that, like,. Uh, you can make sure that you have the spacing to do that because like, you know, the burst range that Rob controls with full charge gyro uh, is Incredible, so you just have to be mindful of that sort of stuff if you want to try and do that It's like it's always good to have uh, Some charge water gun so that you have the option to just remove the gyro um, some Rob's like if if you're able to remove the gyro from play 
Like it, it, it will force them to pull back and reset their approach, which can give you your give you their your opening because now you're giving pressure by distracting them. Like, oh, okay, I need to reevaluate. I need to come up with a new game plan. I need to like start this over. And as they're doing that, they're losing ground. You know. Um, also, like you know, oh boy. Um, like you know, also the fact that like at zero, like Squirrel has some pretty good combos on uh, on Rob, but. Uh, down the man able to get that initial grab, so getting some pretty okay damage on Rob anyway with Ivysaur now. But on, on the top yeah. of Exploital, I feel like last game especially, he got a hit and then was, you know, he didn't go for any follow-ups, right? Yeah. He he didn't do exactly what Exploital does best. Oh boy. Here we go. Flare Blitz in, in neutral? He tried to do he tried to do uppy, but it got interrupted within 10 frames. So the regular buffer it was just like, oh, you're holding. He, he was doing uppy and holding left. So it was like, oh, well, uh, left and B, uh, you definitely mashed B. So now you're going to get Flare Blitz. So <laughs> he died for that. Not hold buffer, but regular buffer. Okay, come try and punish. Uh, now, this is another advantageous position for Ivysaur if he's able to make it work, is just like if he can keep Rob above him, but that didn't really last very long. Bro, yeah, I swear Rob all the trainers really just want to play Charizard if you're from PA. Beast is such a bad uh, influence with his sick Charizard. <laughs> he's like, he's like, Beast is like, you know, the kid that your mom always told you never to hang out with, you know? He's like, son, he's just gonna back air. It's like, but just the back is really cool, and you're like, no, there's a, there's a whole there's a whole plethora of cool things you could do with the other Pokemon too. But look at the back here and the Flare Blitz and the Reeds. Love you, Beast. Out the <laughs> <laughs> Beast in the chat. I didn't even realize. Zard <laughs> oh, is, so is a terrible influence. I don't want to. Is that you acting the same way? That's so funny. Yeah, this matchup is really tough. Like, honestly, if nice, nice. Yeah, like honestly, like if I'm gonna see like any uh, Pokemon on this, it's gonna be a mixture of Squirtle and Charizard. And the only time you'll see guest appearance from Ivy, uh, from Ivysaur is if Squirtle is able to get uh, Rob off stage with a hit, just like yeah, just, just boom, on the and then immediately like, swap and go like it's edge guard time. And the moment you miss the edge guard, back to the dragon. I feel like Rob just so struggles so much to get back to center stage against Ivy. So he holds the stage so well, he pressures the corner so well. Rob doesn't exactly have a lot of quick buttons to challenge Razor Leaf, and he just ha he's forced to just sort of sit and shield and wait for you to mess up every so slightly. What? He's got so many quick moves: forward air, dash attack, down tilt, gyro. Anything that can box with Ivy Sword though when he has space. Ch Rob doesn't have space to move. Are you, his, his forward air is as big as Ivy's. <laughs> I'm not, not eh. Uh oh. Oh. No. Oh no. No. Not like this. <sighs> Depression. I did the room die or? Okay, they're they're still going at it. But yeah, uh, like the only thing like uh, I what was it Razor Leaf is a commitment. Uh, so like you use Razor Leaf to hit the gyro and Rob shoots you with the laser because of the cooldown. So you have to read it. So if unless so you have to be moving with it, but then even still you're committing to it. And the moment you get hit by that you lose your ground. And when he gets up close, he doesn't have a grab. It, remember it's a normal grab with a tether frame data. You know, he has no out of shield options from the front. Like he only has his uh Nair which uh, Rob Fair beats, and it's just a bad time. This matchup is frustrating. Wait, who won? That is a good question. Let me check Smash who? GG. Help her, help. I guess Dan did, because it's 1-1. One, one. Is it 1-1? One, one? Okay. Yeah, let's go, Dan. Yeah, now, whew, Gimma is just going to mash Footstool out of disadvantage, and you know what? It, it worked out for him. Does, like, yeah. every time Dan goes Charlie's, I mean, uh, Squiggle, excuse me, uh, you know, you would think that when he lands that grab, when he gets that hit, you know, you're going to see, like, 21 coming, but it just doesn't always happen. 
telling you, P PA in these Charizard, it's out of control. Yeah. Oh. That was a bit of an odd, like, missed side B from center stage. Like, Dan was on the complete opposite side. I think no he really meant bad. to B reverse laser. Mm -hmm. B reverse laser and yeah. down B, something like that. Happens often. Well, wow, nice catch on the drift out with his F tilt. Okay, all right. Sustain advantage, dragon. Mm, that was an excellent place, Jago, to stuff out Charizard's attempted fire breath. But honestly, I think Rob might have still been able able to get there in time and just run up side B that flamethrower. Wouldn't he? Say that again. What? Had it not been for that Jago placement, like kind of sort of interrupting and saving Charizard, I think Joshathan might have had ample time to just run up, react, and and challenge like Charizard's flamethrower with side B. I think that Jago placement actually worked against him. Hmm. Yeah, I missed it, so I can't really comment on it. Uh... All right, Jonathan, just kind of like recovering, uh, just high and just direct, uh, like not really taking advantage of the fact that like he has the ability to stall and really mix up his recovery. Uh, so Dan the Man gonna take that stock and the nice little high three Ooh. right there. See how he can rack up this damage uh, if he's able to hang on to the stock and not get juggled. Finally able to land. Uh, looking for an opening. I like that. Flamethrower is a very reliable way to poke shield, especially uh, against a frame like Rob. All yeah, right. no one as good as like Bowser's Fire Breath, but, you know, I think Rob just being heavy enough in such a large frame, he was still able to get hit by a considerable amount of the hits. Dan is looking a whole lot more confident than he did in previous games. He has all the momentum by his side right now. Um, he's definitely a player that gets better as the set goes on. Okay. Ooh. Can't be can't be whiffing. Go go, go to the arms. Right, it's all over the place. Pokemon trainer. You did it, Charizard. Damn, it's juiced right now. Oh my god. Yeah, I think Joshathan needs to take a deep breath, slow this down a little bit because he's starting to get kind of steamrolled right now. I see him pressing a whole lot of buttons he shouldn't be, a whole lot of, you know, side B's coming out. Um, and honestly, I see that I see him whiffing those side B's a lot um, in other matches as well. I think that might be like a little bit of a nervous habit. Whenever somebody has a lead, it's like he's always anxious to sort of steal the stock or take the stock with it um, at certain points. So he just needs to take a deep breath, just focus on keeping Charizard out, slowing it down every so slightly, and not committing to things like that. Because look at that, he committed and he died, you know? Game four, Dan, despite losing game one, was able to win the next two consecutive games. Is he going to be able to get the third? Or is Josh going to be able to take this to a game five? Finally, able to start some squiggle combos. Yeah, not a whole lot. Yeah, didn't get as long of a string as he wanted. He uh, messed up trying to get the re-grab out of that down throw. Uh, mm -hmm. Down air, I mean. But you can really just immediately just do down throw up air, up air, up B, and just get a hot, like, 30x damage. Or you could do mm -hmm. down throw up till up air, up air, up B, and just get a hot 40x damage. Um, yeah. Such a nice way to get back to stage from uh, Joshathan. Just to jump at neutral air dodge like that. Um, if they threw out a projectile, you're gonna have enough time to just land safely. Uh, really, really good mix up from him. Wow. Interesting interaction to Flamethrower actually smacking back the Jago. What a jump call out. Oh, this is gonna be this is gonna be tough now, because like you know, he's gonna be in the back seat. He's gonna have to be trying to catch up. Is what I would say if we didn't what just use our giant so up smash and Rob's giant body. And we're getting hit by that. Let's go. When two worlds collide. Literally. Okay, so uh, two stock match. Uh, super low percent, so really no no advantage here right now. So uh, I really like this. I really like the way that Dan is actually using his flamethrower. He spaces it very well against Rob. We don't see a whole lot of Charizards like use it as keenly as he does in neutral, quite honestly. And it's like a nice way of deflecting the gyro as well. What an aggressive edge guard, so committal too. Tries to go for these two frame downers. 
Yeah, he's kind of channeling Beast right now. Yeah, it's this really spooky thing to do versus Rob when he has so much control over how he is going to be in the air. That might be... All right, he DI'd it right. DI'd it right. Shows he's a thick fella. Yeah. You know. I'm going to be missing that tech and still going to be getting hit by that up air. Uh, yeah, nothing a whole lot Josh I think could have done. He just tried to maximize his maximize nice. his damage output didn't while that back tipper. He didn't land the tipper. He would have died if he did. But uh, And despite that not being the tipper, it's still almost killed. Yeah. Good wait. He waited out that down. Right. Looking pretty good for down the man right now. Oh, my God. Yeah, and you see Jonathan is just, he's going for like these overcommittal, like they're desperate side Bs. Like we've seen this like this entire set. Like when he's behind, he just, he's just like, please get hit by this. Please run into it. Up throw not going to do it. Charizard too thick. Why not just do down throw up smash? It's a literal combo at that percent. He can't mash out of it. He was at 180. Anyway, uh, getting the, able to take the stock anyway. Uh, 60 damage isn't that much of a deficit. Yeah. All right. Yeah, just he's he's out of his element. Uh, Dan the man just making him just too worried on what he wants to do and just like trying to fish for it. Uh, not great. But maybe he's gonna start slowing it down now. Uh, maybe he was able to take a breather somehow. Okay. Nice. All right. Yeah, that's gonna be that game. Uh, yeah, super meaty back air gonna. I mean, the best thing that you can do in that position is just kind of wait. Yep. Wait, like what does back air even hit below the stage like that? Does back air hit uh I no. I might actually in I, second thought. I don't think it does, but it, it might based on what on the character. So like with the ledge hang that Char Zard has, maybe? I don't actually know. Mm -hmm. But I mean like in general, like you saw like it's a pretty classic setup of like where the gyro was where like he doesn't need to catch you on the ground on the ledge because the gyro is going to cover it anyway so he's going to make it safe so it's just basically saying like hey you want to jump you'll die lol you want to do normal get up you'll die lol you want to do the roll actually my back air is meaty enough that you won't die but you're still going to get hit that secondary hit which is just ridiculous yeah, just... that move has no right being as active as it does especially the fact that he just got Rob's entire robotic body okay dan if you want to start the game Charizard, you can you can do that in the character selection screen. You can pick Charizard. You don't have to swap twice. It's just a mix-up. Yeah, just wasting time and giving up space as the other guy gets closer and closer. Yeah, really mind games. Really getting inside his head saying, like, you know what? Have this space. Uh, I don't need it because I'm going to back air you. All right. So pretty even right now. Uh... Josh is then beginning to pull away a little bit with a lead here, but it really just depends until he's able to take the stock because, you know, Charizard's such a chunky boy that, like, it's just one one error and, like, you you can really pay for it. But I, I think right now Josh really in the driver's seat. Ooh. You know, I think picking his approach is a lot better and understanding when Dan is actually going to be shielding or not. Every time he's mixing up like his pacing very well. Like, what am I gonna zone? What am I gonna throw out gyro? What am I gonna laser? And what am I actually gonna start to get a little bit more aggressive and just start going in on shield? Um, and now that he's understood, like, you know, Dan at that level, he's able to play a whole lot more aggressive. All right, able to get the F tilt to trade with the laser. This is really good for Jonathan right now. Yeah, woo. I'm so, so I'm so surprised that that four is still connected. It's just like the very top of Rob's arms too. Yeah. Yeah, Rob's fair is ridiculous. It's kinda of like Shake Foyday almost. That being said, high aggressive recovery. Gonna get easily snuffed out by that back air. Uh Dan, not gonna be making the most use of that Charizo. I feel like Charizo could easily have a field day with it and he just throws it right off stage. Yeah, if you want to remove it from play, honestly, just throw it up so that it's in, it's in the least, like, interactive position where, like, Rob can't respawn the gyro. And, you know, that whole area is like, it's out, of the, it's out of your way, it's in your control, so it won't hit you, and you can just ignore it. And, like, if Rob wants to hang around it, let him, because he's literally, tele he's literally telegraphing what he wants. So, yeah. All right, going to land that uh, forward. That. Raise the leaf into Nair. 
Mm -hmm. but nothing really came from that. It, this is, it's going even, except he's Dan the Man's a whole stock behind. Yeah, this is not the time you should be looking for trades. You need to find a way to take the stock right now. He tries to go for a double up tilt up. Maybe he just didn't expect that first up tilt to connect. Definitely sent out a bit of an awkward angle. Josh and then uh, overextending just like a little bit. Like, bro, you're in the lead. Like, just do, go for your setups. You don't need to try and like push against this, you know? And he tries to push against it. Like, bro, just grab the ledge. <laughs> like, the only thing you have to really look out for when you're grabbing ledge against Charizard is like, I don't know, getting too framed by f -tilt. He tried to mash flip blitz in disadvantage. Yep. Oh, Dude, he's trying to up B out of, uh, out of Rob's kill setup, but we'll see how oh. well that keeps going. Oh, it's over. Oh my God. I hated the last 20 seconds of that match. I hated the flare blitz. So I hated the up B. I hated the spot dodge F smash. I hated everything that I just saw. But look at that actual clown fiesta. Spot dodge misses F smash. Spot dodge. What is yeah, this? Th that, that was that was a mess. Uh, no one is happy. Joshathan is happy that it's over. He's like, I don't want to die. Uh, with my desperate side Bs, but, you know, he made it through. Yep, that being said, that means we're going to be seeing the gun back between Joshathan and Mystic Zircon in winner's finals, where, um, admittedly, Mystic Zircon kind of mopped him. Um, it was a tough set. It's going to be up to Joshathan to make the adjustments necessary. Um, but honestly, with the way that Mr. Zircon played both matchups, and especially the Palutena, you know, despite it being such an awful matchup for Isabel on paper, like, I don't know, I feel like he has, he's pretty confident go going into this. Yeah.